Hey, my hands are literally breaking apart right now because it's so freaking dry. What's up? It's a culture detective here investigating, ouch, your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing a mini albums review video where I basically review five albums uh, or five releases in one single video. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, you know, these albums, I would like to talk about them in full length, but I also don't have the time to. So you know what? I'm gonna cram them all in one video. So starting off, I'm going to do a review on the new Sai album, Shiki. So Sai is a Tokyo-based prog metal avant-garde metal band. And uh, this is their latest album, Shiki. Um, and their album, uh, I only caught wind of this album because of Rate Your Music. Dot com and so of course I had to check it out and um, yeah it's it's pretty good it's it's a pretty good metal album now the vocal fry for the frontman of the band is on a higher register which makes the frontman of the band sound like an un an an an, an, <clears throat> an unhinged zombie or vampire so um I don't know if that's a great thing or not on some tracks that sounds really uh crazy which is good but on some tracks it, it really didn't make me enjoy it all that much also a lot of the tracks on the album are really dramatic it's full of epic guitars and occasional bells which is decent but i wouldn't say the instrumentals on this album blew me away or anything like that now um there is still a lot of uh, really good moments on this album shikabane uh, which means uh, corpse has the sci-fi electronic embellishments and the amazing freaking drum fills. I also like the weird occultish chants on the track Satsui Geshi no Ato. And then we have the track Fuyu Gakuru, which means winter is coming. It has the tool esque tom drums and the psychedelic sound effects. I absolutely love the angelic and bright instrumental breakdown in the middle of the track with the distant vocals and the flutes flutes in a metal album fuck yeah i also like to track mayonaka no kai which means strangeness in the middle of the night i love the um it, this track sounds like what sounds like to me an interpolation of a phantom of the opera um the main theme of that play except with some funky synths and talk box vocals I know it sounds goofy when I mention it like this, but it does sound really good. And also the album ending, Toji no Asa, which is like a winter morning. And it, and it's great. It, it, it really lives up to a title. It sounds like a very warm, sweet morning uh, in, the, in the winter season. Maybe winter is over already. It's drony. It's ambient. It's um, almost kind of psychedelic in a way. The first half of the album was a little bit weak, just a tad bit, but I think this is a really decent metal album. So definitely check this one out. I'm giving Size Shiki a 7 out of 10. Next album I'm going to be doing a review on would be Sudan Archives Natural Brown Prom Queen. So uh, yeah, uh, Sudan Archives is an alternate R&B uh, pop artist, rapper, and this is her latest album. It's been released for a while now, but I've been uh, putting off listening to it until recently because I run out of time. But I love the versatility of the album. I have to say there are a lot of catchy moments on the album as well. She really goes over tons of musical genres on this album. She really goes over everything from like dance, pop, to, to R&B, to trap rap. Like she tries a lot of stuff here, which is really good, but that simultaneously means this album is kind of a mess it's all over the place it's instrumentally loose as well the production is not at its best in my opinion and some tracks are just meh and it sort of drags the album down especially given that the album is nearly an hour long so yeah he re she really goes from fancy synthy summary pop tune to average trap rap the album opener homemaker has a pretty awkward and stiff first half but there are still a few highlights on the album that I really like. Chevy S10, for example, is a summery, sweet, and catchy song. I love the nostalgic 
guitars and then we got the saxophones and the house beats it's multifaceted it's groovy it's inventive i love it i also love the track flu f-u-l-e which is an r&b track with some lukewarm and psychedelic vocals and melodies free Collizer is an amazing hip house track with hilariously thick auto tune for aesthetic purposes and the last two tracks are also really great especially yellow brick road which might be my favorite off of the entire album it is a straightforward rap track with some very charismatic singing performances from sudan archives and i like the lyrics about being reminiscent of home so uh yeah really strong album i wouldn't say i love it but it's strong I'm feeling a strong 7 out of 10. Next album on the list is Off with Free LSD. So Off is a hardcore punk band from the US of A. This album is 20, it has 20 songs, it's 38 minutes long. So you know what you're in for. This album is pure unfiltered rage, track after track. And um someone's texting me and yeah this is 20 songs but really it's actually 16 songs and every four songs are book ended with a chaotic noisy jazz interlude and every four tracks have kind of a theme to them which is really really cool and on this album the band especially the frontman uh, keith morris goes over uh, lyrical topics like conspiracy theories and hoaxes and scams which makes this album a really fun concept album I especially love the track War Above Los Angeles. It slaps incredibly hard, but it slaps even harder given that I'm literally living in this place right now and it's... <sighs> I also like the track Kill To Be Heard, the, the refrains. Kill to be heard, kill to be heard. It's just so crazy and unhinged and I really like it. So yeah, good album. Um, yeah. I'd hope the tracks are longer, but that's kind of off style. Feeling a strong, strong, strong seven on this track. The fourth album I'm gonna be reviewing is the new Adeem the Artist album, White Trash Revelry. Usually I include December albums in my year end lists, but this year it's a little bit special because I am not going to be free at all. So a lot of December albums, like the latest SZA or the latest uh, Lil Sims, will unfortunately end up in the 2023 lists if they are good. But um, this album, however, slipped through the cracks and made it because damn is it a good album. Adeem the Artist is a singer, songwriter, country artist. And um, I learned about this artist from watching The Needle Drop, aka Anthony Fantano, as well as following him and Spectrum Pulse on Twitter. And Spectrum Pulse, aka Mark, is another music critic who is very, very, very underappreciated. And it, apparently it is Spectrum Pulse who recommended this artist to Anthony Fantano. But anyways, it is a really good album. It's a simple country album. It's simple, nothing crazy, but melodically it's very heartfelt and lovely and the performances are really passionate. I like the uh, track Carolina, the opening track. I think their storytelling is really strong. And the track Heritage of Arrogance sees Adeem talk about the history and heritage of racism and injustice in America. Throughout the entire album, they talk about queerness and religion and politics, as well as personal stories all over the album, making it a really solid country album that just warms your heart. And it just, it just has a humanity to it that I really like. So yeah, light 8 out of 10. Finally, I will be reviewing the new Per Se EP Decca. Uh, don't worry, I will be doing uh, the review a review of this EP in Cantonese in my Cantonese YouTube channel. But yeah, um, my last album review video is basically Per Se's character character. And in that video, I said that Per Se actually released an EP recently and I'm gonna review it soon. Well, here we go. So yeah, um, this EP has five tracks and it's just okay, unfortunately, damn. Given how much I loved Character Character, I was hoping that Decca would be better. Actually, I listened to Decca before Character Character, but still, I love the first track, Seep 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 See, um, which is a dramatic track with cinematic drums and strings and explosive chorus. 
Essentially, the duo combines the brightness and the vibrance of their usual indie pop music with the same level of drama, and it's so goddamn catchy, and I love it. I also like the third track, Joy Song, which means um, still alive. It's a catchy canto pop track with a really driving refrain, jumpy pianos, and passionate vocals. But the other three tracks are kind of basic and average for per se. It's the same type of ultra passionate indie rock pop song, but with so-so melodies that are not really that memorable or anything. So yeah, I wouldn't say this EP is great. I'd say it's just over, just okay. Feeling a decent six out of ten for this. So uh, have you listened to these five albums? Comments below. Let me know. Like, like, and hate, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. I will be doing one more album review, one more review this year, and then I'm done. It's over, okay? From tomorrow on, list week will begin.